the Rupert on a dependent technology on a gay gache. Shake a e-services and middle income Bangladesh. It is on poor camera. The shower are of hello Korea to clear the honor to coach it. Even after the Jara e-services knee in your career built court. It's an age at the shan after the motor question that the queries that the body the shop kitchen journal on the a session. And for this session, I'd like to introduce you to the guest of the session, Mr. Samad Mirali, co founder, start of Dhaka and executive director. Olympic Industries Limited. May I have you upon the stage? And at the same time, we have Mr. Ahad Bhai, co founder and CEO, Bongo. We have Mr. RFR Bashir, co founder and MD, D Money. We have Mr. Ilmul Hassan Shojib, COO, Sheba XYZ. Give a huge round of applause for our guests and speakers because they are making our life easier through the all e services they offer to us. So, we have our guests and speakers on stage. I'm pretty much excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. And you always try for questions and queries. Get your notes done, uh, make your questions. And I'd like to request Mr. Samad Mirali to take up on the session uh, as a moderator. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to Jago and uh, for having us at NYA 2019. I hope everyone is having a good time. Um, so basically today we're going to be talking about uh, e-services. We have our panelists here today. Um, and I think that what we'll do is we'll quickly go through who everyone is, what they do, um, talk about the services they provide, or maybe a little bit about their money, how they started their businesses. And, uh, and from there, we'll take questions from the audience. I think I was sitting in the sessions the last couple of days, or at least yesterday. A lot of you have a lot of very, very good questions. So I think uh, this will give you an opportunity to uh, ask whatever you need to do. So while we're talking, think about what you want to ask, uh, what you want to know from them, and uh, hopefully we'll have time to talk to everyone. I'll quickly introduce myself. Uh, I think I was introduced quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Startup Dhaka. Hopefully you have seen our documentary on YouTube. It's called Startup Dhaka. It talks about the, um, the startup scene in Bangladesh. If you haven't seen it, please do look at it. I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's supposed to inspire young people to go out uh, if they have an idea and become entrepreneurs if they feel that that's something that they want to do. Startup Dhaka also has a few different services to help people, especially young people, trying to become entrepreneurs uh, through a service called Upskill. And uh, we also recently launched an incubator for people with ideas trying to bring them into the market. You can check it out on startupdhaka.org if that's something that interests you. So that's me, and I'd like to uh, then move it over to our panelists. Um, Ahad, why don't you talk a little bit about Bongo, what you do, and how you guys started. First of all, thank you all for, uh, for having us here. It always excites me to talk to a group of young people. It makes me feel energetic and motivated seeing what you guys are up to. I was your age not too long ago, and it was a fun time. Uh, so before I start, I just wanted to know how many of you guys have heard of Bongo before? If you can raise your hand. A few. Hopefully more after today. How many of you have heard of Bongo Boom? Okay, very few. <laughs> so I started, uh, I started doing business when I was a teenager, actually. I used to hustle in high school and sell CDs during my lunchtime, make a little extra money. And then when I went to university, I, uh, I continued to hustle and sold DVDs, sometimes IDs, sometimes, not that I'm encouraging any of you guys to do that. Uh, some, uh, and I sold electronics on the side, basically to fund my social life and buy laptops, electronics, gadgets. Uh, my second year in university, I came back to Dhaka and co-founded my first startup back then, it was 2004, called Dhaka Hotties. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it. Too Anyone? Young. Too young? Yeah. Anyway, it was... Uh, I would like to say the first social networking site of Bangladesh, but it was basically a photo rating website where you'd put up your picture and people would rate you out of 10. 
Um, it was fun. So back then, there was 300,000 internet users in Bangladesh. And within a few days of us launching the company, we had 30,000 users a day. So you know, 10% of the, the internet using population in Bangladesh was using our product within a few days. So that gave me my first taste of uh, you know, how, much, how exciting doing a startup, like uh, doing a company, being an entrepreneur, doing your own project, how exciting it really was. It didn't last very long because back then, you know, the internet industry and ecosystem was not very mature. And, uh, you know, we were a little bit ahead of our time. Obviously, now, 15 years later, the entire industry has completely changed. You know, the market is developing very rapidly. Uh, everybody has a smartphone. Everybody has internet. So it's completely different. So after I went back to university and uh, finished I did a degree in film production and then decided to come back to Bangladesh and work in media. At first, I started making TV shows for TV. And I didn't enjoy it very much because all the creativity was taken out by the TV stations. And I didn't like, and I still don't like being told what to do. So then I started experimenting with the idea of digital. And that was exciting to me because the only person you have to answer to is the audience. It's only between you, the, the platform provider or the content creator, and the people who are consuming your content or, the, or, or your customers. So that was very exciting to me. And uh, that's basically how the journey of Bongo started, where we came up with the idea of basically becoming like the Netflix of Bangladesh. So we started a streaming platform. In 2013, we basically went out and started buying up rights for uh, all the Bangladeshi movies, TV shows, uh, all music, all kind of content, and uh, you know, tried to launch a streaming platform. Of course, it had a lot of challenges. It took a lot longer than we expected. In fact, uh, after we, we were able to buy up a, lo a large library of content very fast. And uh, after we, were, we had a product that we wanted to launch, it took us about two years to get permission to get our product live because of regulatory issues. We wanted to charge people through, through their cell phone accounts and things like that. So it took much longer than expected. There was a ton of challenges, obstacles every day. So in the meantime, we thought, OK, let's just put our content up on YouTube. So we started a YouTube channel, and very quickly we, got, uh, we started getting a lot of views and a uh, lot of success. And a lot of artists started approaching us, especially youngsters, YouTubers. I don't know if you guys watch local content. So one of the first YouTubers we were working with was Choto Azad, the, the Bi Brothers Limited. And we, started, we created a show with him called Interview with Choto Azad, which became very, very popular. And then over time, a lot of youngsters and young artists, YouTubers and influencers started coming, approaching us to work with us. And, uh, basically to help them with their YouTube channels with creating content. So we started creating a lot of more content with these guys. And what we really found was that the audience was responding to the content that was created by the youth. So an interesting thing was that by accident almost, we became, uh, we became a very large player in the YouTube industry. And YouTube actually called us up and gave us an official partnership. So we became the first company in Bangladesh and still the only official company in Bangladesh to be a YouTube certified partner. And uh, I think I heard a clap. You're welcome to clap. And so that has basically grown from being having our own channel to now we have 39 million subscribers on our YouTube network. We have almost half a billion views a month just on YouTube. And majority of that is coming from the youth and content creators for the youth. So just to give you an example of how influential and how powerful the youth has been in our YouTube journey and our content journey is our first channel, Bongo BD. It took us six months to get to 100,000 subscribers. It took us four years to get to a million subscribers. When we started working with all of these uh, young influencers and YouTubers, they basically said that, look, we have, we're, we're creating a special kind of content, and we're, we want to talk to our audiences. And the Bongo BD channel, our main channel that we had at the time, it was focused more on mass. So Shakib Khan movies, Apurbo dramas, things like that. And they're like, look, we, wanna, we want to give our content and release our content to the people that understand us, who like our content, and who we are speaking to. So we decided recently to launch a channel called Bongo Boom. It ended up being a phenomenal success. We basically signed up all the young influencers, all the YouTubers, and decided to create a channel for them, the youngsters, for the youngsters, by the youngsters. In 22 days, we hit 100,000 subscribers. It became the fastest channel in Bangladesh history to hit 100,000 subscribers. When I was sitting with the, thank you, by the way. When, uh, when I was sitting with the team who came up with this channel and the guys who were working with it, I told them I genuinely believe that this channel is going to be the number one channel in the country, bigger than all the other channels we work with, bigger than our own Bongo channel. And they're like, 
no, man, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. I'm like, just watch. This is going to be, become the biggest. Now these guys come to me every day saying, you were right. We're going to make this the biggest channel. And I really, really believe it. And it's because of the energy and the passion and the drive that the youngsters have. And it's, been, uh, it's been a real, real challenge. Uh, uh, not challenge. It's been a real pleasure working with the youngsters. And I think that you guys have a huge amount of potential. You know, the way that this economy is growing, the way that services for the you know, middle class and new digital services are coming up, and the way that it's expanding, the only way that we're going to keep growing and keep up with the pace is with the uh, contribution, the energy, the creativity, and the passion of you guys. So one other thing that we learned from our journey was that uh, what, when we first started and tried to launch a streaming platform, we saw that the product that we were trying to use, we brought in a, an American company, and it didn't work for this market because the product was made by an American company for high-end devices using fast internet connections, and it wasn't working here. So very quickly, we realized that we had to build the solution ourselves. So starting as a content company, we, we transitioned into being a technology company as well, hired a team of programmers, and uh, rebuilt the entire solution from scratch, homegrown by Bangladeshis, for Bangladeshis, to make a product that worked for this market. The main problem was that at the time that data connectivity was very poor. People in the rural areas did not have access to proper internet connections. They're using feature phones videos wouldn't load properly. So we invested in building out infrastructure across the country, putting CDN networks all, all around the country, and really have invested to create a, a platform and an ecosystem where we can create access to information. For us, it's not only about, uh, about entertainment, it's about creating information. It's about creating the power to distribute information to anybody in the country. And we really believe that the youth have a huge impact to play in that, especially with the creating the technology, creating the content, and being a part of this movement of creating information and using technology to basically improve the lives through education, through information, through media, and through technology. So I, I, I wish you guys all, all the best and you know, hope that you can be part of the revolution. Thanks, Ahad. So basically, you, uh, your, your service provides uh, two things. So you allow um, people to create content and then um, and then you distribute it, but then as well you um, are able to, you have the distribution of the content, so essentially it's like the Netflix for Bengali content. That's, that's uh, really amazing, and I think that there's going to be a lot of people that have questions, but for now, why don't we have um, Arif Bai take the mic and talk a little bit about D-Money. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, great pleasure to be here. Uh, I've been hearing a few things from the team that was here, and unfortunately I wasn't here the last few days. But amazing stories are happening coming out of this group, and uh, so very excited. So um, my name is Arif Bashir. I am the co-founder and managing director of D-Money. Uh, we're a digital payments platform. Uh, we're just starting beta. We hope to launch in about a month. Um, this, uh, this journey started uh, a few years back um, when we started consulting with the Gates Foundation Mobile Money. Um, I was. Prior to that, I was in the US for about 15 years working as an engineer. And out of that came this sort of wired brain to solve problems. When I came back to Bangladesh, we were looking for interesting things to do. And we started a consulting firm uh, looking into what are the problems that exist? Um, how is technology an enabler to solve those problems? And out of that, then our journey started and ended up with us working in mobile money and financial systems. And out of that came this understanding that there is still a great need for digital payments that reduces friction, that removes barriers, that makes it accessible. And as we looked at Bangladesh and as we looked at the markets, it became apparent that there is an underserved market. And there is an opportunity for us to deliver services to serve this market. Uh, so from that started D-Money and we started looking at the various frictions that exist. And you know we've been working to partner with entities to solve those um, and to make payments um, a very seamless and secure experience for the user. Um, as we've, we've started our journey and now we've sort of launched, and one of the things that I want to say is um, many things are required for you to sort of engage with the market. One of the things is clearly an opportunity that needs to exist. And for us, when we look at Bangladesh, it's, 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 it's the notion that there is a demand for service. Um, there is a demand for service and there's an opportunity to serve. But the second thing is that once you accept this and you want to then find solutions to the problems, you then bet on talent. So within the D-Money family, um, there are many like you. And having been 
working with engineers outside and coming back to Bangladesh, I can tell you that we're filled with talent. And like yourselves, they're young engineers that are ready to solve problems, that have the confidence, the ability, the skills. So uh, it's a very exciting time to be in Bangladesh. Um, it's our problem. We can solve it. Um, and we have the capability to solve it. Uh, th those are powerful things, to be in a place um, where there is an opportunity, where there are problems that need to be solved, and there is this young, great talent pool that's ready to so solve. So those are the bets we're making, that together we'll build, uh, we'll find solutions to this ecosystem, and then address, you know, address the problems that exist. Um, so as we start our journey, we're looking around and we're seeing that there are, and we'll talk more, I guess, d during the session, but the idea is that to have a user experience that's great, um, it can't be in silos. So partnerships and stakeholders and how do we form the chains to give one complete solution becomes critical. And those are sort of the areas that we're playing in from D-Money perspective. Um, a focus on payments, but more fundamentally focused on service. Um, how do we give great service? Um, how do we remove the barriers to great service? And how do we contribute to this digital Bangladesh vision that's been created? So, you know, happy to discuss more and, and great to be here. Thank you, Arvind. Yeah, I still carry cash around. I haven't switched over to the digital solution. So hopefully if the customer experience is good enough, it'll convince a lot of people to start switching. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure, again, people will have questions for you. But why don't we hear from uh, Shojib and um, listen about, uh, hear about Sheba.xyz. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Ilmul Haq Shojib, co-founder and CEO of Sheba.xyz. Thank you very much, Gorvi Bhai, Ambri Napa, for inviting me here. And last couple of sessions I have attended over here, and it's really an energetic session that you guys are really amazing. Sheba.xyz, it's an online service marketplace. You know, we have so many e-commerce sites, but it's, we are providing only the services. We have 86 plus services, like electrician, plumbing, laundry, or maybe with cleaning, some other services which you require at home. And the service provider can go to ho your home and provide the service. Actually, what's the problem here? The thing is that, suppose you have a very, like, uh, a favorite gadget, like a mobile, or maybe a laptop, which, or your television, which, which might be damaged or something like that, but you want someone who is actually the right one to handle your product, to repair your product. So the problem is like, as a customer, they need the right person to, uh, right person to contact to handle his favorite product or any other services. So this platform, we have more than 15,000 service providers who are providing services to, the, to that person. And people can choose the service provider depending on the customer rating as well as the better price. So what will happen? As a customer, the problem is solved. Suppose he can contact. But the service provider, like anyone, we want to do business, right? We have some sort of skills. Everyone have some, some suppose someone can play a good guitar. Maybe someone can, do, uh, can cook better or something like that. So you want to do a business. So what will happen? Earlier, we came to business after 13 years of professional life doing jobs in corporate sectors. What happened over there? Because we couldn't do the business because of the lack of information. We don't have any information that how to do a business. Suppose I have a product. Everyone has a problem, like you have a product, but you don't know where to sell. You don't know how to connect customer. Or you know that, but suppose we don't have sufficient money to connect the customers. So Sheva.xyz has that platform. So what will happen, you can run your business through this platform, you can manage your business, you can manage your resources, we can manage our orders, customers, as well as the other, uh, uh, other requirements which will, can be solved through this product, which is called Sheba.xyz Manager. So through this way, we are actually connecting the to total ecosystem, the problem handled by the customers as well as the service provider, this will be connected with the platform as well as the business platform, business apps through which you, you can run the business. 
So the, the most important thing is you have to learn uh, to run, how to run the business and definitely then it's an execute. So the execute part is there, just take the courage and go ahead and do the business. Actually, this is the way we are uh, enabling this thing for the young entrepreneurs. Fantastic. Thank you, Shujib. So, so you're enabling almost anyone to become uh, a service-based entrepreneur through your platform, both getting them customers and helping them manage their business. Exactly, exactly. So the thing is that, suppose someone might think that 86 plus service in the Sheba.xyz platform and you have to do only that business, but we are not limited to that. Suppose in your area, there might be a service which is not available in the Sheba.xyz marketplace app, but through the manager app, definitely you can address your requirement and you can run your business independently with that product. So from the very beginning, you can, uh, you have these modules to run your business independently. Great. So before we uh, open up the, the floor to the audience questions, uh, I just wanted to take a, a chance to ask the panelists a couple of questions of my own. And I think when we look at the e-services market in Bangladesh, I think it's probably just started. Uh, there's only a few out there in Bangladesh. Um, it's, no, it's quite new. I think Patao is only three years old. Bongo's about four or five years old. Uh, I think Sheba is probably three years old. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think probably D, D Money is around the same. So I wanted to hear from your guys' perspective, and maybe since you have the mic, Shojib, you can start, is that is the market ready? Can we start throwing in a bunch of e-services e into Bangladesh? Is there a critical mass of people on uh, consuming online to be able to access these services and actually pay for them? Yeah. The thing is that for the e-services, the major thing is that access to internet. So last couple of days, last couple of years actually, there is a massive change in you know, internet growth in Bangladesh. So now, in, even in rural areas, everyone has that in access to information and access to internet. So internet is everywhere. And the next important point is the cost of that internet. So since we have the traditional network, we have the submain network, so there is uninterrupted services as well as the cost becomes very low. So these major two things already, um, already enrolled in, the, in Bangladesh. So now everyone, it's very easy, every, each of them to do business and to work over here through the e-services. Okay, and Arfpai, what, what are the sort of challenges that you're facing in terms of uh, oh. the market? Right. So it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, so first, a couple of myths, right, that, that abound, for example, cash is free and digital shouldn't cost. And I guess that's a myth because um, cash is not free. Um, we just don't take into account the hidden costs that are involved when you work with cash. Um, the second thing is that when you digitize, um, what you're doing is you're unlocking potential. Um, you're sort of unlocking a service that otherwise would not be possible if you were dealing with cash. So um, for us, if we, if we look into the cash to digital conversion, and that's where the e-service or digital service comes in, then in, some enablers need to be in place. Um, um, and I think from what Sheba was saying, that it, uh, in terms of tele-density, uh, in terms of smartphone penetration, in terms of um, uh, sort of network connectivity, we're looking at 10, 20 million growth uh, consumer-wide, um, you know, um, uh, over a few-year period, and we'll add more as we go along. So um, the underlying plumbing is clearly in the right places. Um, we've got the infrastructure. Um, any vertical we look at, it's still 90, 95 percent cash. Any any segment we look at, um, if you take the proposition that this is fine. Um, um, then that's sort of one set of arguments uh, that you follow. But if you take the proposition, no, if we digitize, then X, Y, Z happens that is currently not happening, then we have an opportunity. Because um, it is really about uh, providing services that don't even yet exist. Um, for us, uh, we're in the payment space, and we really look upon ourselves as enablers to sort of unlocking service potential. So as we work with partners, um, uh, for example, um, let's, let's talk about service. Um, 
you know, there are services you get at the point of transaction, right? That's one set of services. So if you go to a place, you pay for it, you get that service. Now, if you decouple the service provider and the service consumer so they're not located at the same place, then payment becomes a friction. Um, how do you pay for the service that you're availing because you are not at the point where the service is consumed? So then automatically you end up with a friction point. H how do you resolve that? So, you know, this applies to things like health or education, you know, telemedicine, what have you. I'm just giving simple examples. But across the board, the, what we see is that um, if we're able to optimize, um, that's when we really unleash the potential. So if you ask me one of the challenges that, for example, D-Money is a payments platform, and we're going to provide all sorts of services as an alternative to many of the services digitally that you do get, but we'll optimize those transactions. So for example, um, let's say digital channel A or B has a certain fee. We look at them and say, why is the fee so high? Uh, what can we do to bring the, uh, the barrier to entry down? How can we remove the cost? So um, optimization is one of the things that we work at constantly because if we optimize the transaction, if we enhance the service, then we have a real play. Um, then, we, uh, then we sort of contribute to this adoption of cash to digital. Um, as we go digital, we enter into things like scalability. Uh, we enter into things like additional services and uh, sort of many sort of domino effects start to kick in. So um, if you, um, so to, um, to kind of summarize this, um, the, our big challenges is one building ecosystem um, that we don't believe works in a silo. Um, so one of the things that are really working uh, that if you're going to optimize, then you have to break the silos. Um, that's, that's sort of any sort of standard optimization approach, that you break the silos, you make these horizontal platforms, um, and, and then you uh, remove the friction that exists. And as you bring in the stakeholders, you, you then sort of create these engines, if you will, that, uh, that sort of lend to scalability and growth. Okay, thank you. I had any uh, thoughts on... Um on what you've seen through Bongo. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think from my perspective, I would break it into two parts. So one is in consumption and the other is willingness to pay. So what we've seen in terms of the market size, it's really grown. As I mentioned earlier, when I did my first startup, there was 300,000 internet users. Now there's 90 million plus internet users. Data has become cheap with 4G. It's become more and more accessible. Uh, you know, it's cheaper to load video. It's cheaper to buy smartphones. So I think the market for services is definitely there. The question is, uh, what are you giving to the user? Are you giving them value? And are they willing to pay for it? So in my opinion, they're willing to pay for something that they feel brings them value. Just to give you an idea of the rate of growth of the industry. Uh, I'd mentioned earlier that we have 39 million subscribers on YouTube. At the beginning of 2018, we had 5 million. At the end of the year, we had 30 million. You know, we went from 5 million to 30 million, six times in the matter of a year. And that's just because of the organic growth of the industry. It's because more and more people are starting to consume content online. More and more people are willing to pay for data. So it, you know, the industry is really growing very, very fast. As the industry grows, there's more and more need for services, and there's more and more uh, demand as well from the users. Now, in terms of the willingness to pay, that's where we've seen a challenge. People are now getting used to the habit of consuming content and using up their data on content. And that is something that we've seen change over time. When we first started, we were seeing that people were not necessarily watching long videos. Uh, you know, now we have live TV, we have you know, cricket matches, we have full movies. When we started a few years ago, people would mostly watch music videos, they would listen to songs, they would watch clips. If, even if they wanted to watch a full movie, they would watch five minutes, 10 minutes of the movie. Now we're seeing they're watching the whole movie on their phone or on the laptop or whatever, but they're, they're consuming a lot more. When, when we started, and we saw that people were starting to watch and consume content, and we tried charging, the conversion to people willing to pay was very low. But we were seeing that now as, the, as uh, tastes are maturing, as audiences are becoming more mature, and, and you know, the demands are growing, they are willing to pay more. But it's still a very price sensitive market. So the question is, are you offering the user value, and are they willing to pay for that? So just to give you guys an example, in the case of Bongo, we've seen that people are willing to pay for content or they're willing to pay for data. But a lot of times they're not necessarily willing to pay for both. And the main reason is because data is, uh, you know, video is very data heavy, they're worried that, okay, if I'm buying, you know, I paid 100 taka for my one gig data pack and uh, now I want to watch a movie, is my entire data going to be used by the end of it? So what we did with Grameen Phone recently was launched a data bundle where you pay one price 
and you get data, and with the same access, you get uh, you can consume all the content. So you pay one price for data and content both, and we saw the response to that was fantastic. So it's really about finding the right mix. In my opinion, the market is massive and it's growing at an exponential rate. There's tons and tons of opportunity, but it's about finding the right mix and giving the right value to the user. Hello. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think the willingness to pay is a big part of the market. Um, I. Really be interested to see how many people in the audience are paying for uh, some sort of e-service or another. Just uh, maybe just by a show of hands, how many people have actually paid for an e-service online? Yeah, very, very few. Um, and and I, th I think that, yeah, sure, that's growing and maybe it would have been less a year ago. But I think that really speaks to that the, the willingness to pay. I, What, uh, for the, uh, so just to follow up on your question, uh, for those that didn't raise their hand, uh, maybe what are some of the things that is preventing um, uh, accessing digital services or online payments? Yeah, okay. Uh, anyone anyone uh, would like to answer that question? Just put up your hand and I think we'll get a mic to you. There's someone over here. Okay. Karakara online purchase kore, ba kore chhe. Okay, here you have the hands. <laughs> These are the people who have purchased things in online. Specifically, jara kore na. Unna the question ta chilo chhe ke jara kore na ekho no, keno kora hoy na online ne. Mane kiki badha apne ra face kochhen je. The question ta ki korbo? Ha bola. Acha, amar question chhe bongo or je MD chhe nona kase. Je amra ekho no dekhi bulgarity bepar ta kub rapidly barche. Through YouTube, through social media, जहेत आपने देर YouTube content आचे आपने देर YouTube है, शेखेत्र आपने बालगाड़ी पेपर की की proper step नहीं अच्छा ना आधु एगुला apply कर होये चिकन हम जानते जाच्छी, कारण most of the youths are 18 to 30, so आम्रा most of the time YouTube है कटे rather than media, बा अन्न अन्न channel थे के, so शेखेत्र आपने देर कुन proper step नहीं होये चिकन हम जानते जाच्छी, आर्टिस डोमिनिक सामो पर जेह प्रश्न डा अमरा देखलाम दाराज ऑनलाइन बा ऑनलाइन जो ऑनलाइन पी क्या वो ये गुलास है ये गुलास देखा अमी निजे एक जिन्स क्राइ कर लाम तो जिन्स टाइम अमी फेक पे है ची एक है तेरा आपना तेरे प्रॉपर स्टेप रखी है अच्छा हम जानते जाते हैं थैंक यू सॉरी एक तू रिपीट कर बेन आपने प्रश्नों चलो एक आमा प्रश्नों चलो आमी फ्यू डेज बैक आमी एक टा प्रोडक्ट के नीचे लम दारस थे के सो शेखेत्रे एक जोन क्रेटर रेस्पोंसिबिलिटी दिखते के आमी जी प्रोडक्ट चाहिए थी आमा कोई प्रोडक्ट दाव है नहीं आमी जोगन कंप्लेन कर लम दे जस्ट डिनाइड मी तो Okay, so uh, our point is that it's extremely valid. Um, we have seen e-commerce, uh, I mean, we have said that we have a head-to-head -head comparison with neighboring countries. Our e-commerce uh, should be about uh, 60x what it is currently. Just apples to apples with the comparison. So, in terms of the in terms of market opportunities, Bangladesh growth, we have a huge opportunity. So then you accept that premise and you say, okay, Kano, why are we not there? Um, and exactly, um, so a couple of things that we identify is um, if you want a good e-commerce experience, clearly it's not just the e-commerce website. Um, the experience has a number of stakeholders involved uh, in a chain, and each chain then has to fulfill its role for you to get the good service at the end. So you ordered black shoe, you should not get a red shoe because then that causes a whole set of pain. So the idea is that from the e-commerce side, the merchant, the logistics, the delivery, the payments, um, this is the chain that we see for online purchases. And if you are not, if you any of these, if, if you consider this a chain, if any link in this chain is weak, then your experience is bad. Um, it could be a logistics delaying it or losing your product. It could be the merchant not responding correctly. It could be the customer service not addressing the grievance when it does happen. So this cycle is weak in our, in our findings, that we don't really have sort of the brand that stands behind. Um, if you call up an e-commerce and say, I did this, then the chances are you'll get, well, this not meets the merchant. Um, the merchant you have to track down about a week and then you know, so on and so forth. So um, to us, these frictions actually represent opportunities. That if we are able to give this very smooth experience, the next time around we ask this question, you know, 90% hands will go up because you're having such an awesome experience. If you can sit in home, if you can make this payment securely, and if the product you want arrives quickly, uh, then why not? 
um, there really isn't a good reason to look for alternatives. But you're absolutely right. The current, um, you know, uh, digital payments is really a friction. People are hesitant to use cards. Pe security is a barrier. There is an awareness and a culture issue. And I think the big one is that uh, what people are facing is when problems happen, how are we addressing it? And I think there is work to be done in this space, just uh, from a digital perspective, is that um, if the service point is weak, then adoption will be weak. So it's a very good question. And, and, um, and in our, point, in our uh, space, we're working actually very closely with this to address exactly this model that D-Money wishes to put its name up front. And at the end, you should avail that service and say, I'm happy and I want to use it again and tell 10 others. Um, uh, because your current experience means that you'll tell, hey, don't even bother. So yeah. Yeah, actually, just if you could keep the mind, I, I think that you're very right. I'm on the Bangladesh, I'm on the customer service, I don't know how to reach it. It's still very, very low service. Yes, I'm on the expectation. Yes, yes. And this is the it adds to this digital job. At the end of the day, I'm on the whole chain to not complete Kori, the digital experience will not be able to You know, um, because e commerce is still 90% is still COD, which is cash on delivery. So we're doing e commerce, digital, but then we're paying in cash. So a connect of friction at it. Amra Kubhabi Chachi to take Kajkorte, near D Money is very much money uh, taking this upon as a challenge that how do we work with everyone to make sure end user upnerge experience ta eta jam with smooth ho you have a smile on your face and you tell ten others. Yeah. I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot. Okay. Kono e service available. I I I have and I faced exactly I'll tell you it's even worse. Uh, I'd even bother to complain because the nightmare <laughs> of tracking down, I ordered something for my father and it didn't work. And I just thought, just, just forget it. So I've taken that personally, that I don't wish to experience it myself. And I'm here to experience it in China. So, and the way we see it is, I'm not going to You know, I'm not end user experience to an actor entity. So if you address the stakeholders, address the chains, and make sure the chain is strong, then end result becomes good. So yeah, I've had bad experience and uh, uh, wish to change it, yes. Fair enough. Uh, actually, Shojib, you need to operate core. Exactly. Keep up with customer service to maintain core. Exactly. This problem is actually very important. We have the product and the service to the actually we have the right trip. And we have to keep up with track. The thing is that, আমরা যে প্রসেসটাকে ডেভেলপ করেছি যে সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডার কাস্টমারের বাসায় গিয়ে সার্ভিসটা দিবে ওকে ফাইন সার্ভিসটা দেওয়ার পরে কাস্টমারের সেটা পছন্দ হলো না অথবা রাইট সার্ভিস হলো না সার্ভিস কাস্টমার ইমিডিয়েটলি হি ক্যান রেইজ অ্যান ইস্যু থ্রু দ্য অ্যাপ অর হি ক্যান কল টু আর কল সেন্টার আওয়ার কল সেন্টার ইজ ওপেন টোয়েন্টি ফোর সেভেন সো কী হচ্ছে যখনই কাস্টমার আমাদেরকে ইস্যুটা রেইস করছে আমরা সাথে সাথে সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডারের সাথে কথা বলছি হোয়াট হ্যাপেন আমরা চেক আউট করছি যে আসলে এই সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডার রাইট পার্সন কি না যে সার্ভিসটা দিয়েছে অথবা কাস্টমারের যে রিকোয়ারমেন্ট সেই রিকোয়ারমেন্ট অনুযায়ী যেতে পারছে কি না দেন সাথে সাথে আমরা সেই সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডারকে রিপ্লেস করে আরেকটা সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডারকে পাঠিয়ে দিচ্ছি এবং সেইটা দিয়ে সেই সার্ভিসটা মেক শিওর করছি আমাদের কেপিআই হচ্ছে ফর্টি এইট আওয়ার্স কম ইস্যু রেইস করার পরে যদি এটা কোনো ড্যামেজ বা কিছু হয়ে যায় আমরা ফর্টি এইট আওয়ার্সের মধ্যে সেটা রিজলভ করে ফেলি এবং রাইট ওয়েতে কাস্টমারকে জানিয়ে দিয়েছি যে কাস্টমার আমাদেরকে কোয়েরির মাধ্যমে টেক্সটের মাধ্যমে আমাদেরকে ইস্যু রেইস করতে পারে অ্যাপের মাধ্যমে রেইস করতে পারে কল সেন্টারের মাধ্যমে রেইস করতে পারে সেই জন্য আমরা অ্যাওয়ারনেসটা খুব ক্রিয়েট করছি যে রেদার দেন কিপিং ইন মাইন্ড যে আমি ই সার্ভিস আর অ্যাভেল করবো না এরা খুব বাজে হয় এরা খুব খারাপ হয় আসলে সেটা না সব কিছুর মধ্যেই ভালো খারাপ আছে কিন্তু প্রসেসটা এমনভাবে ডিজাইন করা যে আপনি আপনার ইস্যুটাকে আমাদের কাছে নিয়ে আসেন যাতে আমরা যারা আছি ই সার্ভিস দিচ্ছি যে কেউ যে কোনো কোম্পানি তারা যাতে এটাকে রিজলভ করতে পারি এবং আপনার স্যাটিসফ্যাকশানটাকে আমরা অ্যাচিভ করতে পারি তো সেই জন্য খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট যেই চ্যালেঞ্জটা ফেস করছেন সেটা জানান আমাদেরকে এবং আমরা ডেফিনেটলি সেটাকে অ্যাড্রেস করে সলভ করবো আর কি থ্যাংক ইউ তো সচিব আমরা গতকালকে একটা ডিসকাশন করলাম যেমন ফিউচার পার্কের ব্যাপার You said that you go there to watch movies. Have you seen Bangla cinema? Dekhen? Right. Have you seen Bangla yeah. cinema? I've seen it. I've seen it. Right. Have you seen it in the cinema? The cinema is in the cinema, right. Online? I've seen online movies, but I've seen content. Like Bongo, I've seen it. Bongo, I've seen content. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's true. Bangla is not a good thing. I've seen it on TV. I've seen it on 10 million views, 1 million views. I've seen it on the timeline. I've seen it on the timeline. Okay. You've seen it on YouTube. Yes. Very good. Congratulations, Bongo.
<laughs> one customer. Uh, OK, so same question to Ahad. Have you ever used any e-service? Going to use, use Quaritch? Not a lot, to be honest. But Why? Uh, I think that, I mean, like, I've used Daraz, for example, for online shopping. I've used a couple, like, Direct Fresh I used to use for groceries. And those are the needs that I have. So it's not for any other reason than just whatever my needs are, I use those products. And those products work great, and I use them regularly. OK, fair enough. So I'm going to have another actor, uh, idea to the asset marketer. Paper. So uh, I already see hands up. So I'm going to have shift query question and answer session. Uh, maybe we can pitch on it. Can we have someone with the mic? Hi, my name is Saliha. Thank you for choosing me. This is the first time I'm getting to speak. So a little louder, please. Hi, my name is Saliha. This is the first time I'm getting to speak in the past three days. Um, I think I had a suggestion in terms of e-services. So like how you said that um, app when you have a product, you have a problem, you have a complaint, we have a problem with on Ekshumai, I think even myself, Jokonamar complain thake, I just go like, you know what, what's the point? Let me just not do it. So what I think I feel valued, Jokon Judio am kunu product ni happy thaki, amake jokonu e service to call kore. Jace, they call me up and they ask, oh, well, did you like the dress that you ordered? Or did you like, for example, the earrings we sent you? Did they get there on time? So I feel valued. And then when I feel that, recognition that, okay, they understand that, okay, they, that I've sent this to a customer, I feel like I can buy it again from there. So I think that would be a suggestion. And I actually had a question um, to Mr. Samad. So your new whole a show with Tiger's Cage, what do you have to do to be on there? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so definitely our mono customer service is very important. I think Throughout Bangladesh, do the hospital thakuk, hospitality, e-services, every, 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 everything. I think customer service is a key point. But in terms of Tiger Cage, um, Tiger Cage holo a YouTube TV show. Jekhane amader entrepreneurs rashe are they pitch to investors. So for those of you that haven't seen it, it's free on YouTube. Um, Ashla Amra Shud actor pilot shoot Korechi. So right now we've filmed only three episodes. But to be on Tiger Cage, uh, I'm on their website to email Pathaide. We're looking for applicants. We're actively looking for good companies to showcase. So just get in touch. Personally, do the Apni Amake Connect Core and LinkedIn. I'm happy to, uh, to talk to you if you've got a good idea. Uh, I'm myself in a I'm an investor, so um, we're reasonably accessible. Just send us an email, connect on LinkedIn, um, and then we have a showcase for Tiger Cage. Any other questions? This one went up first. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Sayoshaya Sadman. I am from uh, BBTC district. So uh, my question is regarding uh, customer service. Uh, whenever I call them for a complaint or query or product, uh, product return, uh, uh, they give options like uh, press zero to uh, talk to customer service or manager, something like this. But before that, they take uh, two or three minutes uh, for advertisement. Uh, this is something uh, that dis uh, discourages us uh, to call customer service or do something like this. And also, after doing that, uh, they say your call is fast in line. Then three or five minutes they, after that, they say uh, uh, they are currently busy now. That's it. They, uh, they cut the call. So why is that? And uh, uh, what could uh, you guys do to improve this and uh, encourage us to uh, use customer service for uh, betterment? Thank you. Anyone from the... Thank you for the question. Anyone from the panel want to take that one? Choji. Okay. Arvai, if you want to go ahead. Thank you. Very nice question. I can share my experience from my telco background now and later on Sheva.xyz. So, telco the key hoy. 
আমরা যখন প্রথমে ট্রাই করেছিলাম যে যখন আমি গ্রামীণ ফোনে ছিলাম বেসিক্যালি বা আদার স্টেল কোজে যেটা হয়েছে যে এই ওয়ান টু ওয়ান নাম্বারটা টোল ফ্রি হয়ে যাক টোল ফ্রি হয়ে যাওয়াতে যেটা হয়েছে প্রচুর কল আসা শুরু হলো তখন সেই কলটা লোড রাখা যায় না সেই জন্য যেটা হয়েছে তখন ওরা হলো না ঠিক আছে টোল ফ্রি করা যাবে না এটাকে একটা রেট থাকতে হবে লেটার ফট হ্যাপেন কলগুলো তো আসছে বাট কলগুলোকে যদি ই সার্ভিসে মুভ করতে হয় কিছু সার্টেন সার্ভিসেস আছে যেটার জন্য আসলে ম্যাক্সিমাম কল হয় তখন বেসিক্যালি সেই আইভিআরটা ক্রিয়েট করা হয় যে মেজরিটি লাইক সিক্সটি সেভেন্টি পারসেন্ট কোয়েরি বেসিক্যালি সেই বাটন প্রেস করে হয়ে যায় সেই জন্য বেসিক্যালি সেটাকে ইন্ট্রোডিউস করা হয় তারপরে যখন দেখা যায় যে হ্যাঁ এটার পরেও হচ্ছে না বেসিক্যালি সেই জন্য ইন্ট্রোডিউস করা হয় যে হ্যাঁ লেটার অন একেবারে লাস্টলি আপনি কাস্টমার ম্যানেজারের সাথে কথা বলতে পারবেন তো বেসিক্যালি এইভাবে এই জিনিসটাকে ডিজাইন করা হয়েছে বাট সেবাতে যে প্রবলেমটা আমরা সলভ করেছি সেবা ডট এক্স ওয়াইজিতে যে এখানে কোনো আইভিআর বেসিক্যালি আমরা এটা ই হচ্ছে না আপনি কল করলে অটোমেটিক কাস্টমার কাস্টমার ম্যানেজার যিনি আছেন উনি কলটা ধরে বেসিক্যালি আপনার পারপাস সার্ভ করছে এখানে এমন হতে পারে যে ইয়েস ফাইন উনি হয়তো ওই জায়গাটায় সার্ভিস তাকে সার্ভ করার জন্য আরেকজনের সাথে কথা বলতে হবে দেন হয়তো টাইম নিয়ে সে কলটা বন্ধ করে স্টপ করে হয়তো লেটার আপনাকে কল ব্যাক করে সে অ্যান্সারটা দিবে তো বেসিক্যালি এই জন্য ডিজাইন করা হয় সেই জন্য কিছু কিছু জায়গায় যখন কোয়েরি বেড়ে যায় সেটাকে অটোমেশনে নিয়ে আসার জন্য বেসিক্যালি আইভিআরগুলোকে ইন্ট্রোডিউস করা হয় বিভিন্ন কল সেন্টারে Uh, <laughs> I can't say no to the young lady in the front, so let's have her ask a question quickly. Thank you so Thank much you, for the I opportunity. I think you all know her. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And my question is to Mr. Ahad Bhai, that uh, there was one show, Juice News, now I've used to host the show. I, I have been a big fan of that show, apart from being now a kind of colleague. Uh, but my question is, in international uh, shows, we see that we mock about our uh, celebrities and they do take it easily, even in front of the celebrity, they're doing stand-ups or whatever, mocking. But if it happens in our country, it like, things go either viral or they get very offended. So how, what do you think, since you have a platform, uh, these things are really happening like uh, internationally. So when it comes to Bangladesh, why like our celebrities get so offended? Or if we like do the, like the Choto Ajad show, there has been things regarding Choto Ajad as well. And then uh, one episode I can remember with Sonny Kapu, then like people went, on fire, that uh, why she's doing that. Then the two other models, things went viral <laughs> with them as well. So uh, that's not my question. Uh, you are doing it. Uh, I like it because they are uh, getting interpersonal with us. But uh, how about our celebrities getting offended when we do mock or uh, when we talk about anything uh, regarding that, uh, that how you are like, going to do this? Uh, very good question. So firstly, to address the episodes that you're talking about, sometimes it's deliberate. Like, <laughs> Asif is a very cheeky guy, so he deliberately brings controversial topics so people talk about it and watch it. But I think that uh, you know, you're, you're 100% right, and this is a topic that we have to be very careful about. Uh, there's a couple of things. Firstly is I think that Bangladeshis in general, of course, our society is much more conservative. Uh, so we have to be careful about you know, things that are said in media by celebrities in other countries are not necessarily as widely accepted here. The second thing is that us as Bangladeshis in general, we're very emotional and very sensitive people. So we have to be, you know, we have to be careful about what is said. But I think that as a platform, we encourage people to share their views. So if you're going to offend somebody, you know, you might, you never know when, what, what you're going to say to offend someone. I think that as uh, the access to content and, you know, becomes more and more available, as more and more creators start publishing content on platforms like Bongo, on, on YouTube, I think that audiences are going to become more accepting as, uh, as the barrier to distribute content becomes less. And it's, some things are never going to change. You know, like people love to hate. People will always love to hate. But uh, I think it's, it's a balance of those things, of you know, the cultural sensitivity, of making sure that the content creators do keep in mind Good. what the audiences want, what they expect. And uh, you know, it's, it's just about, for us, we encourage people to share their views openly. So we don't, we don't believe in censorship or anything like that. Of course, within reason, I mean, as, as long as it's uh, appropriate. But I'm glad you like the shows. <laughs> and yes, since I'm a fan of Juice News, I would uh, love to see 
extended episodes of Juice News because I still watch the old old episodes. So if you can think over that, thank you. We'll, uh, unfortunately, that show has been cancelled, but we will, we're looking into doing a new format of it with a new host. So hopefully when it comes out, you can watch it. Thank you, and I think uh, there was Nafisa Kamal on stage who mentioned something about uh, something similar about you know having a very emotional response with celebrities uh, in Bangladesh. So it seems to be quite common. Acha, a side thing, act a question, Nibo. Oi, Jee, oi, Khanee. Hello, sir. As we are talking about e-commerce, I just wanted to ask, why don't we still have Payoneer or PayPal in our country? Because uh, for the freelancer or the ICT section, it's a very burning issue that we uh, need to boost it up uh, for the economical development. We have so many freelancers, but we don't have PayPal in our country officially. So why aren't these um, problems are being addressed? What are the uh, barriers? I wanted to know, actually. Thank you. I think maybe RFI can. Understand. Uh, to question, repeat, Corbin, kindly. Sorry. Is it PayPal is not here, or? Uh, sir, as far as I know, that PayPal, we cannot open an account officially here in Bangladesh. Uh, not yet. So. Right. I think there are two entities. Uh, so just to clarify, D Money is, uh, doesn't do cross-border payments. Um, we're within Bangladesh. But um, to address your question, um, for cross-border, I, I believe there are two entities. Uh, Bank Asia has tied up with Payoneer. Payoneer is, uh, I think, is one of the entities that I think directly addressing uh, Apni J Pointer Race Question, where you open up accounts and you do freelance work and they actually uh, um, uh, top up your account through Payoneer. And there are things one more, right? Yeah, two entities they're working. PayPal is here, but I think they're very limited scope, I believe, right? They're working with Chonali Bank only for uh, remittance, uh, foreign remittance. But Apni J Freelance, there are two, but you bring a very interesting point, um, wh which is, um, the remittance corridor. And that's, while D-Money is not directly starting off with that, um, Amra Dekchi, that there's huge inefficiencies in, in, in this cross-border payments. So um, Amra, the next phase, we're actually actively looking into what optimizations can we bring, because uh, freelance work and also our migrant worker, the uh, remittance, the core, um, that's a huge volume that comes in, and uh, those inefficiencies really stack up. So I think um, in, in a broader scope, there's a huge opportunity to optimize the remittance corridors. And I think that will happen very soon. Looking forward to it, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So I think we have uh, time for only one more question. Um, and I would like to choose. I'll have to choose the next question. <laughs> Pick someone. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, finally. Okay, uh, sir, uh, I'm Junaid Namil Islam Tomba. I'm from Dhaka district. So I uh, actually have a recommendation. Uh, so like uh, you all have official Facebook page, right? So what you can actually do is that uh, people do recommend on your services and products all the time. Like they keep recommending. So what actually happens about us when we choose any product or services that people do negative, uh, negative review or positive review? So like we fall in with a little bit dilemma of what we should believe. Since uh, we can message you, we can text you that uh, which product you should uh, choose. Like, but you will obviously uh, uh, tell that your product is the best. But I think if you uh, give a little more attention to the recommendation, then it can be a great help for you and for us about the product or services. So uh, you can do another thing. I think. Uh, uh, when we you have a, a question? Sorry, a question, sir. Achay. To yes, sir. A question to the Another question. So uh, another question is that, sir, I have been uh, uh, looking for someone uh, for so long that everyone chooses their products and services, but all the time we see that the model are good looking, handsome, tall guy. Why is that? This uh, it's, a, it's a actually, sir. Uh, I, I would necessarily need to be a good-looking, handsome guy. Everyone choose your service, your products. Good question. Anyone? What would you rather see? Sorry, sir? What would you rather see? What would you rather see? I want to see myself. Wow. 
I think it's a matter of taste. I think that the people who make the ads probably choose an image that they feel that the audiences will relate to or that they will aspire to. So that's probably why that profile of person is, is chosen. Similarly, if you're appealing to guys, you choose you know, a tall, good-looking girl with nice features. So it's just about appealing to the audience. But that being said, I think you should, uh, you should apply and, and you know, be, try and be in an ad yourself. It's all about the chance. Give me the chance, I'll prove myself. Send us, send us a message on our Facebook page. All right, sir. See you there. Thank you, audience, for these great questions, some from way out of left field. Um, I think we're running out of time, but uh, if we can thank our panelists once again with a round of applause. But before we go, Amra, ekta, uh, Startup Dhaka, ekta Facebook promotion the Chilam. Uh, at a contest, chilo apna the duita question chilo that you had to uh, answer on a Google form. I want to know if you participate in this. We have a winner. It was a ticket to Bangkok. Uh, now you're regretting not going on the Google form, right? I want to know if you have to fill up your form. But um, our winner. I'd like to announce today, um, and I'd like uh, Corvi to come up. I'm going to give him the name, and he's going to announce it. Corvi. It's not your name. <laughs> okay. It is, the name starts with R. Then A, then K, Rakibul Islam. Who is Rakibul Islam? The winner. Can we have some music for Rakib? Thank you, panelists, and thank, thank all of you for having us. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you so much to all our honorable speakers, guests, and the panel members. Now it's time for the biggest thanks. And for that, I'd like to call upon the stage, Mr. Corby Rakshan. Then let's give a big hand. And yes, good luck. Uh, I know Ekjon Hap Tulachan Jinikina Nijake screen and Dekta Chan as a hero. I know many of you are here and Nijake hero, hero, and Nisha Dekta Chan. Chana? Had Dekta, yes, Bulla Mikam Nebujbo. Matre Ekojon. Amio. I want to be the villain, you know? Acha. So I will, I will <coughs> see Mr. Ahab Bhai later. I'm going to show you later. I'm going to show you later. Uh, can I have Mr. Corby Rakshant up on the stage and at the same time I'd like to call our honorable guests and speakers from the session e-services in Middle Income Bangladesh, Mr. Samad Mirali, co-founder, startup Dhaka and executive director, Olympic Industries Limited to come up on the stage. We'd like to hand over the token of honor in the stage and we're going to have Mr. Corby Rakshant here as well. Let's give a big round of applause for this wonderful moderator. I was sitting right in the audience and I was really spellbound with uh, Mr. Samad. He's such, an, such a wonderful moderator. And uh, yes, Mr. Corby Rakshant, can I have you up on the stage and hand over the uh, token of honor? At the same time, I want to uh, call upon the stage Mr. Ahad Bhai, co founder and CEO Bongo, to come up on the stage and receive the token of thanks. And Mr. Arif R. Boshir, co founder and MD, D Money. And last but not the least, Ilmul Hassan Shajib, COO Sheba XYZ. Give a huge round of applause for covering such a wonderful session, e-services in Middle Income Bangladesh.
introduction to our guest and thank you so much to the audience and I'd like to know 